Good morning, and welcome to St. Paul, United Church of Christ, Keokuk. On a cold, stormy night, he calmed the sea with his hand, and he calmed the sky with a word. Take a walk with me, take a walk. Scripture reading today is from Psalms 34, 1 through 8, and Ephesians 4, 25, 5, 2. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of one body, if your anger do not 
In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with the, those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. That it may benefit those who listen, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with who, whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and eager, burrowing and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each one, just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave Himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? No turning back, no turning back. The children come forward for the children's sermon. Hello, children. <clears throat> Sound like Mr. Rogers. Hello, neighbor. <laughs> well, what did you do this morning? Nothing besides get ready for church. Oh, what did you do in the service this morning? I sang. You sang? What else did you do? Read the scripture. What else did you do? Light the candles. You lit the candles? Okay, you did all kinds of things, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, today I'm going to talk about the way in which we are called by God, and we're called by God to serve God. So were those ways in which you <clears throat> served God? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, there's others in our congregation who have other things that they do to serve God as well. Yeah. So, God calls to each one of us and calls to you to serve. So, when you serve God, then things work out pretty well, really, because we're doing what God wants us to do. None of us can get out of uh, serving God, by the way. No. No, have you ever tried to get out of chores? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, each one of us has to do something for God. Maybe we give a little bit of food to the uh, 
God's way. Maybe we make a contribution. Maybe we make a contribution to the church. Maybe we give some food to the uh, food pantry in the community. Well, there's all kinds of ways in which that we can serve, you know? So <clears throat> let's give thanks that we can give uh, service to God. Let's pray together. Lord, Lord thank you. That we can serve you. That we can serve you. Amen. Amen. Very good. Well, one of the classic ways <coughs> in which you can be appointed, <coughs> one of the classic ways in which you can be appointed to serve on a committee, of course, is not to attend the meeting at which the appointments are made. <coughs> For some reason, it seems to make sense to people to appoint you to committees when you don't attend the meeting at which uh, nominations are made. You can see the look in people's eye. There's kind of a mischievous look. And they say to themselves and to others, well, we can appoint them. They're not here. And uh, the question you have when you get the call then is, uh, who, me? because you've been appointed and, uh, and you were not aware of it. Another who me moment appears when an officer stops you uh, because you've done something wrong, such as speeding, uh, changing lanes when you should not change lanes, uh, not putting on your signal when you should put on your signal, rolling through stop signs when in fact you should have stopped, of course, none of us do any of those things, right? I mean, none of us do any of those things. Well, <clears throat> the officer stops you, and you have this innocent look on your face like, who, me? Who, honest citizen, me? <clears throat> Why did you stop me? I'm an honest citizen, so the laws don't apply to me when I'm in a hurry. Why would you stop me? Who, me? So we're called upon then to pay a fine. We're called upon to pay a fine and, and we have this who me moment. <clears throat> well, when God calls us, we sometimes have that same kind of moment. <clears throat> who me? And uh, <clears throat> when, we, uh, when we have that moment, we look kind of like Sylvester, you remember Sylvester from the cartoons? And he always wants to eat Tweety Bird. And uh, Sylvester is sitting there with the feathers in his mouth and he's going, who, me? <clears throat> A kind of an innocent look like we didn't hear anything or nothing happened. Well, we don't need to be appointed to a committee or to have that uh, that time when we do something wrong <clears throat> in order to be having that who me moment because God keeps calling us. Now God <clears throat> doesn't call from a cell phone. God actually calls us all the time and, and calls us inside our head is what it amounts to. And <clears throat> You can almost, if you really, if you really are, are quiet, you can almost hear the calling and calls us by name. It's an individual call. It's an individual call for us to serve. You hear God calling. You hear a knocking at the door. Knocking, knocking, knocking. We have a picture out front here of Jesus knocking at the door. It's a kind of call. You, you know that you're being summoned. You look at life and you think to yourself, is this all? Is, is this it? Isn't there more? God's calling you. God's calling you because God's raising that question in your mind. And you have that opportunity to serve. God is calling, calling, calling. There's always a knocking at the door. Now, sometimes we're so busy, <clears throat> we don't hear it. Sometimes we're so busy that we don't pay attention. But it's always there. <clears throat> it's always in the background. 
We may not be listening. <clears throat> well, when I was younger and, and sometimes today, I have a tendency not to listen when I'm absorbed in something. And I had a tendency not to listen in classes, for example, when I was reading a book. I would be completely absorbed in the book. And one time <clears throat> I had a teacher who was calling to me and repeatedly calling to me, but I wasn't hearing it. But finally the class started to laugh and uh, that got my attention. And what she was saying was, Earth to Milo, Earth to Milo. You see, finally, finally got my attention. God will do that too, cause something to happen in our lives and uh, we'll have a wake-up call, you might say. <clears throat> and then we'll listen. The United Church of Christ says that God is still speaking. God is still speaking. Are we listening? Are we paying attention? Or are we so absorbed in other things that we do not hear? Sometimes during biblical times, God would send a prophet to get the attention of the people. Sometimes they didn't want to hear what the prophet had to say, so they'd kill the prophet. But nevertheless, God would send a prophet. <clears throat> I think it's, it's good for us to think, for example, now about Samuel <clears throat> and uh, how he ministered before the Lord, the biblical story of Samuel. And uh, we read of that in the following. There had not been uh, many words from the Lord during this time, so people got used to not listening. And listen to what happened. <clears throat> the boy called Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down on the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. <clears throat> Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. Now Samuel had not <clears throat> yet known the Lord, the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli said to Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he says, Say, <clears throat> you say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood there, calling as the other, at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, <clears throat> Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel and Eli had not expected to hear from God. The United Church of Christ says that <clears throat> the Lord is still speaking. Samuel and Eli had not expected to hear from God. So often today, we do not expect to hear from God so we don't really hear God. Because we're not expecting it. We're not expecting it. What we expect to see, what we expect to hear is the normal stuff. But God is still speaking. And sometimes we need to stop, open our ears, and listen. And to a large degree, our examples, our expectations control what we do see. That's a very interesting thing. <clears throat> Suppose, for example, I asked you to watch a whole bunch of people 
dribbling a basketball here. And you watch that happen. And then, in a little while, I have somebody in a gorilla suit come from over here and walk through all those people dribbling a basketball. Because you're focusing on the basketball, you don't see the person in the gorilla suit. There's an experiment like that. They asked people later if they had seen the person in the gorilla suit. They hadn't seen them. Your expectations really, really uh, change a lot. We don't see God sometimes because we're not listening. Our expectations shape everything. They say in physics these days that uh, our expectations shape things even when we observe things at a very small level. That in fact, they shape reality. What's really there in front of us. The observer and reality become part of one thing. Your expectations are everything. God is speaking. God is knocking at the door. There's a still small voice in the back of your mind speaking and calling. Maybe calling you to give a few cans of uh, food. Maybe calling you to help here and there. If we listen, we'll hear that voice. The knocking, the knocking. Oh, somebody's knocking at the door. That must be God. So we're listening. And as we listen then, we understand that there are things for us to do. So are we listening? <clears throat> Our situation is different, of course, than that of Samuel. During that time, God had not spoken to people for a long time. And that was just the way it was. Sometimes, for example, between the Old and the New Testament, there were a few hundred years where God, there were no visions. The old men didn't dream dreams. Nothing seemed to happen. But I think, I suspect that in our age, things are a little different than that. I suspect that in our age, God is speaking, but that we've, we've stopped listening. And because we've stopped listening, we've forgotten about each one of us having a personal call to do things for God. We haven't heard God for a long time. One of our challenges these days is to open people's ears so they hear God, to make them disciples. And we need to listen ourselves, for God is still speaking. And as we do listen, God calls each of us to serve. <clears throat> What's the core thing that we do in the church? What's the core thing that we do? We go to other people <clears throat> and we say, listen, listen to God knocking at the door. God's knocking at your door and your door and your door. And if we listen, we'll know that God is calling for us to come and worship Jesus. That's one of the core things we do is to go out and tell people this news that God is coming to each of them individually, calling them to turn and serve Jesus Christ. That's what the church is all about. It may be other things as well, but that's what it's really all about. Each one of us being called to go out and tell people in one way or another that God loves them and that God wants them to live with God forever. There are many ways we do that. Some people do it more directly. Some people do it through service in the community. Some people do it by simply telling people that, oh, I have a church event that I need to go to. And then people ask, well, you know, what is it? And you get to talking about it. And uh, 
As you do, you find that, uh, that you are, have an opportunity to talk about what God is doing in your life. Speak for your servant is listening. Speak for your servant is listening. <clears throat> That's what we need to do in relation to God, and then God will tell us what to do. God calls each of us. The call is an individual call. <clears throat> and we say, who, me? Am I the one who's going to be called? Who, me? Individually, God is calling individually to me. The creator of the whole universe is calling to me. Yes, the creator of the whole universe is calling to you. And the creator of the whole universe is saying, your task your task in life is to bring others to me. Your task in life is to relate to them how God has helped you in your life. And then perhaps they will follow me. That's our core task as a church. All of our efforts move in that direction. The churches have many things that they take as their tasks. Uh, these days. Um, quite often those tasks involve um, just the idea that uh, we'd be busy with the mechanics of the church. And sometimes uh, when we are, we forget to listen, to listen and uh, God calls us to prayer and to that one mission that we have the mission to witness to the whole world. Sometimes we witness simply by how we live. And we read of that in Scripture today. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do let, not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with his hands, that may, he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, as it may benefit those who listen. There are many, many things, many ways in which we can live. Last Sunday I was on vacation, and Kim and I like to go around to <clears throat> craft fairs, various events in the community. And uh, as we do, it's good to look at the people and, and how they're living and what their callings are. Some of them are called to work with wood. Some of them are called to work with various other things. And I think to myself, how many of those people would benefit from going to church? How many of them would benefit from a word of hope here and there? You hear people talk, they have various challenges in their lives. And I think to myself, you know, the church really has a wonderful message to bring to people. A wonderful message that their whole life can be focused on bringing glory to God. It can be focused on that rhythm of calling God in prayer, finding what our purpose is, and then going out and doing it. So many people are looking for that focus to serve God. It is our focus in our lives and one that we can bring to others. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And leave us not in tem tem temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You have been listening to St. Paul United Church of Christ, 2030 Plank Road, Keokuk. Join our worship service at 10 a.m. with fellowship hour immediately following. Until next week, may God bless.